Hello there, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I'm going to be creating a couple of cards today and correcting a big mistake. So get comfy and let's get crafty. I am going to be using some Distress Oxide inks to do a blended background panel for one card. I am using a red and an orange and a yellow because they naturally blend together. I believe it's fired brick, ripe persimmon, and lemon squeezed lemonade that I start with. And I'm just using my ink blending tools on a um, craft mat because it's easy cleanup. And these colors are naturally going to blend well anyway, but the Distress Oxide ink blends just awesomely. Um, when I get down to the bottom end and I want to add the, lem the squeezed lemonade, I will start off and move toward the orange. Um, my blending tool did get a little bit of that orange, the right persimmon on it, but that's okay. If it doesn't wash out, then I'll just get a new one. They're not, not the end of the world here. Um, I do like how these inks blend, especially when the colors are analogous right next to each other on the color wheel. They kind of naturally blend together, like I said before, but you cannot even see the white cardstock. And this is a quarter sheet of Nina Solar, um, Solar White 80 pound. Now that I have some ink already on my craft mat, I'm going to add a little bit more and I will be doing some ink smushing. And I am just going to smush those ink pads right down onto my craft surface. And this time I have a piece of watercolor paper and I'm just going to um, add the ink, add the water and smush that cardstock into the ink. I am going for more of a watercolor wash look than the speckled watercolor look. I wanted it to look flowy and um, very, I don't know, earthy, is that a word? Um, I did find I was getting a lot of orange. So I cleaned off my craft mat, I heat set my panel and put down just some yellow. And this is again, the squeezed lemonade. And when I added the water to it, it just dried back much more pale than I wanted it to. So I pulled out the mustard seed. It is a little bit darker. It tends to lean more orange, but when you have the water in it, it definitely lightens it up just a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and pounce that yellow in. And that is the contrast I was looking for. I want that to be obviously red, obviously orange, obviously yellow. I am going to heat set that again and add another layer um, of the red. This is fired brick which tends to lean more toward the orange as well. Um, I did find that it was getting too orange. So I splashed that in a couple of times and then I cleaned off my craft mat, heat set that and went for a darker red. And the dark red or the other red, the second red that I pulled out is um, candied apple, I think, or worn lipstick. One of the two. It's a darker red. <laughs> it does give me more of that three-tone look I was going for. And again, I'm trying not to get this, the water spot so much as that kind of flowy um, color combination. The Distress Oxide inks have that oxidation that appears, and it makes the, the blending, once it's dry, look kind of um, cloudy, oxidized, right? But if you take the Distress gl um, Glaze and go over it with a blending tool, it kind of removes that cloudy feature. It also sets the inks and makes them a little more permanent or a little less likely to react to water, I should say, or wetness. But it, it kind of um, brightens up the colors. It is really, really obvious when you are dealing with uh, colors that are um, more likely to make mud. In, in most inks. All right, so now that I have my backgrounds done, it's time to go on to the card making. And I am testing this panel to see if it is dry enough, and it was not. So I, off camera, I heat set that again. I am going to add some more of this um, embossing powder to it and throw a little, throw a little bit more, spoon a little bit more embossing powder over the top to see if it still sticks. And this time I was able to shake off all of the embossing powder so it is ready for some stamping. The reason that you do this is to make sure that the embossing powder only sticks to the place that you add the ink. 
That's important to know. And I will be using this um, W plus nine. What's the name of this stamp set? Let me see. Um, kind Soul is the name of this stamp set. And I love this flower spray. And I'm trying to figure out where on this panel I can put it. Um, I ended up using my Misty, probably not how it's actually designed. <laughs> I put some adhesive on the back of my card panel and moved my Misty or my card panel rather up out of the corner of my Misty so that I could get that spray kind of centered onto my card panel. I am going to go ahead and put some more of that um, embossing powder on and then I will ink the stamp up with Versamark ink. I am going to ink it twice to make sure that I get um, as much of the detail as possible out of my stamp. I did find that there was one little part I did not ink or push down well enough, but I covered it up with the sentiment strip. So easy peasy lemon squeezy. I use my rag to make sure I get good pressure on my lid to kind of pull out that detail in the stamps. I am going to emboss this with white embossing powder and I'm, I'm keep my embossing powders in these pencil cases with the latching lid so that I can just hold the card panel right over the container and have the embossing powder fall right back into the container. I am at a loss for words right now. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. <laughs> I did decide I wanted the background to have just a little bit more texture, a little bit more interest. So I am going to add some more embossing powder. And then I have this old script stamp, script stamp, from Stampin' Up. And I am going to add just a few um, places where this scripty text shows up. I am stamping it with um, Versamark ink, and I am going to add this time some clear embossing powder. And for whatever reason, I decided I would do it over a sheet of scrap paper instead of just over the bin. Probably because I wasn't sure where I could hold on without smearing it. I'm going to go ahead and heat set that and now you can see that the text is there, but it's not there. Yeah, it's just a little bit something interesting. I want to use two of the sentiments from this stamp set. I want to use the hello and the little sentiment that says you have a kind and beautiful soul. I am going to start by stamping the sentence fragment of, or the sentence of these two sentiments. And I am stamping them on a piece of scrap black cardstock. And I'm going to heat emboss them with white embossing powder. Or, um, a contrast to the card. I am have put powder down on my paper. I'm following all of the rules I know about heat embossing. You know, I am making sure the panel was dry. I am using my powder tool. I am um, using a brush to brush off the extra. I kind of skipped one of the rules. I did not heat set that before I went in with the next stamp. I was kind of playing daredevil here for a minute. I figured it's going to be super fast. And if any of that embossing powder falls off, well, I'm going to stick it right back in the embossing powder bin anyway. So cross my fingers and it did work. <laughs> I was being a little bit of a, uh, card making daredevil, if, if you will, or a heat embossing daredevil. I am going to go ahead and trim this down. And I did that offline or off camera because it was a pain because my trimmer still needs a new blade. I know. I decided to trim this card panel down just a little bit. I have pulled out my Waffle Flower A2 layer dies and I am using the third from the largest. So I'm cutting this card front from four and a quarter by five and a half inches down to about three and three quarters by five. So it's a little bit smaller. I wanted a larger border on my card base around this panel. Now that I have that run through the die cut machine, it is time to create my card base and I am going to be using some black cardstock. I will create a USA two size card, which is four and one quarter inches by five and a half inches. And then I will adhere my card front to the card base. That's a lot of words that sound the same. I did slide a piece of, of white scrap paper behind it because my work surface is black and the cardstock is black and it makes it a little more difficult for my old eyes to see where the the borders around this panel are and I really wanted to make sure that this got lined up um, pr 
pretty equally. Now, I wasn't so concerned that I pulled out a ruler. <laughs> I still totally eyeballed it. <laughs> but I didn't want it to be super off. <laughs> I am going to use my sentiment strip right there and cover up the one little section of a flower detail that didn't stamp perfectly. And then all that is left is to add the white copy panel on the inside of the card. And I am ready to move on to the ink smushing panel. And this is where my crafting day kind of took a, oh, a heavy sigh. <laughs> a really heavy sigh. So here is my ink smushing panel. And I have great plans for this panel. And I skipped a major, major step. I did not, you notice, you didn't see me. I did not test to see if this panel was dry. I did not coat it with ink, um, embossing powder. And I did not dump some embossing powder on top of it to see if it would stick without stamping it. And yeah, that was a bad decision on my part. Um, I This piece of um, watercolor paper is slightly larger than a card front and I am going to be trimming it down. But I did want to get that um, flower swag mostly on. And all I'm thinking about right now is this beautiful Simon Says Stamp rose gold embossing powder that I will be using on this stamp. I did not test to make sure it was dry. And it was, oh my goodness, it made me cry. <laughs> and by cry, I mean kind of yell loud enough to scare my dog. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. I am using my towel to make sure, and I'm really pushing on that spot that didn't stamp really great the last time. And I've pulled out a piece of scrap paper. I, st I inked it up twice. I did all the things, y'all. I did all of the things you do with heat embossing, except test that my background was dry. Spoiler alert, it was not dry. And it was an unmitigated mess. Um, this embossing powder I do not keep in a little container. So I've dumped it onto my panel and I dumped it into a piece of, <gasps> there it is. <laughs> I dumped it onto a piece of scrap paper to funnel back in. And then I walked away. I had to leave my craft room and do something else. And when I came back, I pulled out the My Favorite Things Beautiful stamp, the Honeybee Stamps Leafy Foliage stamps or die set that came out in the release this um, last month, and some vellum and some gold cardstock. I have cut the beautiful word out of the gold cardstock, and I am going to adhere it to the shadow that I have cut out with vellum if I can ever get all of the insides of the words out. I did remember to save my um, what's the dot, the dot on the eye, what's that thing called? Yeah, I did remember to save that tittle. There you go. I remember to save my tittle. It is stuck to a piece of blue painter's tape, just slightly off screen. And once I get this word all lined up on the shadow, I will add a little bit of glue just above the eye on that shadow and painstakingly pick the tittle off the blue painter's tape and put it onto the shadow. I will wholeheartedly admit I did not like this card when I finished it. It was not what I had planned. I was still so frustrated that I had skipped that one step that is like, you know, the step when you're talking wet mediums and heat embossing. Oh my goodness. I was so frustrated. As I look at the card now, I think it looks really pretty. So I did not want to cover up that heat smushing. Um, all the way. I just wanted to hide the fact that I had stamped that floral stamp set on there and not wasn't able to use it. So I cut the leaves out of vellum and then I decided to cover it up just a little bit more by stamping the panel with this um, scripty stamp set, the same one I used before. But this time I will use a white pigment ink. So I am going to adhere this or line this up in my misty. I did put a little adhesive on the back of that panel so that it can, the whole thing can be covered. And this is a Tailored Expressions white pigment ink. It's Sugar Cube, I think is their color name. I don't know all the color names anymore. 
I have too many ink brands to know all the color names anymore. I am just going to give this stamp some nice firm pressure. I am not concerned with complete and total coverage. I am going for concealment of the boo-boo at this point. I then remembered how long it takes for a white pigment ink to dry and pulled out my clear embossing powder. And I figured that the shiny from the clear embossing powder would also be a distraction to the fact that you can still kind of sort of see that flower stamp in the background. And with this, the words on top of it, it kind of blends into um, just a mixed media texture background. Like it was supposed to be there all along, even though we all know it wasn't. I ended up only using three of the leaves from this die set. I used this one that looks a little bit like ivy. And then these other two that look like, I don't know, like milkweeds or I don't know what they look like. <laughs> I'm not a botanist. I don't know what leaves are. I can pick out an oak leaf and a maple leaf. And I can pick out that ivy. Um, I generally tend to kill the green things that come into my house. I even managed to kill succulents. Which, as far as I knew, only needed sun and the water occasionally. Yeah, I don't know. I am just putting the adhesive, the Tombow glue, on the very bottom stem of these leaves. Because it is vellum, the adhesive will be visible. And I did not think ahead of time to put an adhesive sheet on the entire back. The entire piece. So I'm going to have a little bit of floppy leaves on my card. Whatever, we're just making it work. I will adhere the beautiful word down there to cover up the adhesive on the, the bottom of the leaves. And I can do that as long as I keep the glue behind the gold cardstock. I decided it needed something just a little bit more. And so I pulled out the Simon Says Stamp um, Happy Everything, maybe? or just happy stamp set. It has a little um, phrase that says for you. So I will be stamping that on a piece of black cardstock with gold embossing powder. And I'm just going to adhere that with my Tombow glue right snug on the top of that beautiful word. It also helps keep those leaves down just a little bit. My glue is apparently clogged. <laughs> and it just kind of finishes off the card. So all that is left now is to add this to a card base. And I used the other half of that piece of black cardstock to create a black card base. It is also an A2 size card, one and a quarter by five and a half inches. And this was my crafting day. It did not go at all as I expected. And I did not like this card until today when I sat down to do the voiceover. So let me know in the comments below how you fix your boo-boos. Do you throw them away? Do you repurpose them? Or do you just pull it up and fix it somehow? Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a fabulous day. And hey, like my video, share my video. See you later. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and watching my video. I have linked a couple other videos here for you to watch, as well as a subscribe button. If you have not done so already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. And if you know somebody who would like it, please feel free to share. Have a great day.